This is July 1943, near the end of the fourth year of the Second World War. British and American armies are storming into Sicily, paving the way for the invasion of the mainland of Italy. Battle-tested Germans stiffened the defense of their Italian allies. Mussolini's soldiers had long since lost heart. Only the presence of the Germans kept them fighting. And Mussolini, outwardly jaunty at a meeting with Hitler near Rimini, privately pleaded with his German master for help to save his crumbling empire. Rome was heavily bombed on that very day while the dictators talked at Rimini. Many casualties, vast acres of desolation, nursed the yearning of the Italian people for an end to this war. A war of no glory, a war of defeat and suffering. The Holy Father walked among the crowds giving them comfort, urging them to remain calm showing them money that was to be devoted to the relief of the victims of the bombing. He gave them his blessing. And a few days later, after more than 20 years of unquestioned rule, fascism was overthrown. Mussolini was arrested by the high command on orders from the king. All Italy rejoiced to welcome the new regime. But under the new government of Marshal Badoglio, Italy was not out of the war. Allied landings at Salerno and elsewhere hurled themselves at the German garrisons that took the defense of Italy out of Italian hands. Now Italian partisans fought in the streets against their former German allies. Hitler's Nazi divisions fought British and American soldiers, Italian partisans and others. In every town, city and village in Italy, scenes like these bore witness to one of the strangest somersaults of fate. German soldiers made prisoners of the Italians who had begun the war as their allies. Hundreds were lined up before a firing squad. Thousands of children became the orphans of a storm that was beyond their powers of understanding. Fathers, brothers, sisters, mothers, they had none. Nobody knew where they came from. Their past was a blurred memory of starvation camps and loved ones who silently and suddenly disappeared. Nobody could tell them where they were going. Who would tell them if they could?
tonight. Please make certain that they're all well enough to travel in the morning. So soon, Reverend Mother. May they not stay a few days until they're rested and fed. I'm afraid it wouldn't be wise. I've just received news that Signor Mussolini has been deposed. Then, then, that means the war is over. Well, not yet. The Nazis are still with us. This afternoon, the Germans have taken over the government of Florence. Perhaps they'll be coming to our village. And our work will need all the help from heaven it can get. 
We'll be ready in the morning, Reverend Mother. Let them have one good long night's sleep. And perhaps when they're all in bed, you will sing. Uh, Sister Mitya, I hear you have learned some Jewish song. Yes, Reverend Mother. It'll help. Thank you. You've done well. Good night. Good night, Good night, Reverend Mother. Sister Constance, I beg of you, be extra careful today. Do not attract attention, as when you felt the urge to be a racing driver. Toot toot! Now remember this, and remember well, do not put out your head like this. Don't make any noise. Do you understand? No noise. That's good. Stay that way. Go now. And remember, drive like a middle-aged nun. before the Allies, I should hope. I'm afraid I'm only wishing. Alitla, the location of Stalag 16, if you please. Stalag 16? The Italian garrison. Oh, the concentration camp. It's straight ahead as you're going, about 10 kilometers. So, Alita. My goodness, are they all like that? I'm afraid so. Lieutenant? 
have the honor to introduce Colonel Eric Horton, Second Army General Staff. By orders of your commanding general, you are hereby relieved of your post to be replaced by Colonel Horton. Do you have to talk so loudly, Lieutenant? It's quite true. You are loud, Schmidt. Major Spulletti. Well, never mind that. Unpleasant being surprised this way, huh? I assume you have not been notified. Uh, no, sir, but almost nothing surprises me anymore. I'll have my things moved from here right away. There's no hurry, Major. Schmidt, proceed as planned. Post the new garrison rules of discipline, make an inspection, form a security guard of picked men, notify me when all is in order. I shall address the men. Sir! An invaluable man, Major. Completely obedient. Completely stupid. With a regiment like him, I could conquer the world. Haven't you such a regiment, Colonel? Sit down, Major. A cigarette? Oh, thank you, Colonel. British. Works every time. If it would fail now and then, I would feel more hopeful of winning this war. Now then, as former commandant, you can probably save me a lot of trouble by telling me what you know. Yes, sir. You might begin by telling me why there is so much partisan activity in an area where there is an Italian garrison. Partisans live in the hills like will the wisps Nobody knows who they are or where they are. You know, of course, that these will o the wisps as you call them, are effectively dynamiting a number of our supply trains needed at the front. Yes, sir, but I'm afraid I can tell you nothing very helpful. Uh-huh. It also seems you have the highest percentage of persons escaping from any camp in northern Italy. The people who are escaping are children. Small children. They're quite agile, hard to contain. Like cats. Children. I wasn't told that. I saw them just now. They're Jewish children rounded up from various towns by your Gestapo. The parents are usually killed. We in the Italian army have had no training in the confinement of children. It is for Letty, don't talk like a fool. The German army is no more responsible for Nazi politics than you are for Mussolini's idiot dream of being Caesar. I'm as tired as you are of this Jew business. For my part, I wish it had never started. I wish I could forget about it. However, that's not the problem. My orders are there will be no more persons escaping. And they are your orders also. Yes, sir. I shall issue strict orders that anyone aiding in the escape of camp prisoners will be shot. That's what you should have done. I'm afraid it didn't seem reasonable to make such a fuss over children. My dear Major, if an army were totally reasonable, it wouldn't fight at all. But we are at war. And all orders must be obeyed. All orders. Yes, sir. Major, my troops will deal with the partisans. Your troops are still in charge of the camp under my orders. This must be the last time we are fools to try and outwit the Germans. Are you frightened, Sister Consuela? Yes, I am, Jerry. Yes. I've 
done this many, many times before, but I'm frightened. Come. Come. We must not delay. I don't think you see the point. This German commander means what he says. You know that he posted notices in the village. Has anyone found aiding the prisoners will be shot? Yes, I know. Our work will be more dangerous now, but it still must be done. It is not work for nuns. Now, please don't tell me again that it isn't woman's work. Woman's work is whatever work must be done, especially if it's the care of children. I give up. Forgive me, Father de Men. I did not mean to sharpen my tongue on you. Ah, they're back. Come in, please. Mother Catherine. What is it? Dear Mother Catherine. What is it? Sister Consuela. Yes? Is dead. Fired. I couldn't bring her body in. And she's still lying there, all alone, in the darkness? No, the, the sentries have taken her body away. Reverend Mother, what shall we do? We will go into the chapel, and we will pray for our dear sister. God is punishing us for our wrongdoing. God help me, Father Demen. I've killed poor sister Consuela. Father, help me. Tell me I am not wrong. You must give up this work now. This is what I meant. But what of the children? There's still so many more children in the camp. What of them? What of them? What of the sisters? They're not equipped to be soldiers. Even though you have the help of the partisans, it will be no good to continue. You'll be risking their lives, too. And yours. You've helped me, too. I have helped because my heart agrees with yours. Because I admire your courage. But this German is not our Italian major. We can't fight this one. Nor can children. Whose lives must I choose? The lives of little children. Or the lives of our sisters. And those who help us.
Sister Margarita, the panel was open. <gasps> I forgot. In all the excitement, I forgot. Lives depend on it, my child. Lives. Do not forget again. Now. to be undressed by a girl. I'm not a girl. I'm a friend. You're a girl. I know you are. How would you like some chocolate? I'll trade you chocolate for trousers. I can eat it with my trousers on. You must have a bath. You can't bath with the trousers on. Yes, I can. Ah, uh, all right. Are they all well? All but this one. She really isn't well enough to travel. Mother Catherine. Mother Catherine. A German staff car from the camp is on its way here. Someone telephoned to warn us. I knew this would happen. I told everyone this would happen. It's very wrong of you to tell everyone. If you feel panic, don't communicate it to the children. We have very little time. Now, children. My sweet ones. You know why you're here? You're going on a journey. A very long journey. <laughs> My mother. Little thing. I'm not going to lie to you. You haven't got a mother. Your mother's dead. But at the end of the journey... There'll be a new mother waiting for you. A new mother. And a new father. And a new home. They've asked for you. Even without knowing you, they've prayed for you. They love you already. Why can't I have one? You can have two. A mother and a father. All of you shall have mothers and fathers. And warm beds. And songs at night. And love. You were going to stay a little while. Instead, you must leave at once. Now, who will be the first to finish dressing? Well, I didn't want to get undressed in the first place. <laughs> Sister Honoria, Sister Margarita, go to the cells. Collect all the children's clothes and hide them here. Yes, sir. Sister Tia, what shall we do? Sister Constance is still in San Loreto with the truck. It's a garage. Something went wrong with the brakes. Just for two years association with the truck, one should know how to make the brakes behave. Phone the garage. Make a hurry. All those who can be spared, please go to your cells. We may be searched. Sister Raffaella. Signor Vanetti, whether the brakes are healthy or not, Sister Constance must come at once. What's that? She's already started. Well, then why didn't you tell me so in the first place? No, no. No, no, Signor Renetti. It's quite all right. Forgive me. Goodbye. Sister Tia, it's all right. The truck is on the road. Good. Sister Honoria, go to the front gates. If our visitors should arrive before the truck, we shall need warning. Excuse me. Please exchange, please. We really should keep the little one with us, Reverend Mother. She isn't well enough to travel. Then we shall keep her. Pisa, 34861. Reverend Mother, I must speak to you privately. Order of Saint Cecilia. Mother Superior, please, at once. Not now, sister. Not now, thank you. Mother Catherine here. Our plans have been changed. The prayer books are leaving at once. Please be ready to receive them. No one. I haven't got time to explain. Yes, they'll be arriving at your convent in about three hours. Thank you, Mother. Reverend Mother, if you'd be so kind. I 
beg you to consider for a moment the virtue of patience, Sister Goethe. Reverend Mother, I must warn you that my conscience will not permit me to have anything to do with smuggling these children out of here. Right, Sister, we shall not violate your conscience again. Come in, please. Not yet. Let the children wait here until it comes. Keep them absolutely quiet. Where's the little sick one? Oh, she's here with Sister Meteor. What troubles you, my dear? Can't you tell me? You don't have to be afraid of me. You'll be needed. Come, Sister. Take Sister Meteor's place. Surely it won't burden your conscience to hide the child in case we're searched, will it? Stay here and keep her with you. <gasps> she bit me. You wicked child. She isn't wicked, Sister Goethe. She's frightened. Return love to the child, Sister Goethe. And pray for her. The car. The German car is at our gate. I see. When the truck arrives, Try to load the children using the back entrance here. But be most discreet, I beseech you. Tell Sister Honoria to open the gates, please. Only a moment, gentlemen. The, the trouble has to do... Oiling of the lock, I believe, or, or possibly an unexpected accumulation of rust. Thank you. smell of wine. You smell of spring? You mustn't speak to me like that. I'm a sister of charity. No, no, not yet. You're only a novice. There's still time. I have no time for a man who imprisons little children. Leave me alone, Vittorio, please. Well, Major. Send Colonel Horston, the new commandant of the camp. Her Highness Princess Hohenberg, Mother Superior of this convent. A German princess? A German, yes. Your Highness. But Major Spoletti surely knows that the nuns of this convent bear no titles. Won't you come in, gentlemen? Father Demand. This is Colonel Horston, the new commandant of the concentration camp. And, of course, Major Spoletti, whom you know. Father. Please sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. I will be back in a minute. Forgive me, sir, but is it not rather unusual for a priest to be in a convent? Perhaps, sir, it is more usual for a priest than for a soldier. Father Domain is chaplain of the nuns, Colonel Horston. There are only two officers. I shall try and keep them in my study. Proceed as planned. Go now. Be very careful. God bless you, children. The bishop is sacrificed. Like this. The queen is trapped. I have too high a regard for bishops, Colonel. I would rather sacrifice the knight. And then, you see, I've trapped the king. Forgive me, gentlemen. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. And now, what may I do for you, Colonel? Madam, I'm afraid we are here on a sad mission. A sad mission? Yes. 
One of our patrols on duty fired blindly into the night at what he fancied to be an enemy. I regret to tell you that he killed a young woman, a member of your convent. That can only be Sister Consuela. She was out on an, on an errand of mercy. Uh, our medical staff is preparing for a burial. But I'm, I'm deeply sorry. I bring you our regret and our promise of indemnification. Indemnification, Colonel. For a life. Yes, I've given orders that the man who fired should be severely punished. That will not help Sister Consuela. It would merely be adding one brutality to another. The body will be returned with full military escort. It's all we can do. Colonel, I'm sure you mean to be kind, but please, no military escort. Sister Consuela would not understand. Oh, yes. Yes, quite. Yes. And there's something else, madame. Perhaps Major Spoletti has never made it clear to you that there's a curfew. My soldiers have now been ordered to shoot those who ignore this rule. And when you've killed someone else, you will come and apologize again. We are at war, madame. Against nuns? No, not against nuns. Against children? Madame. I came here to apologize for the accidental death of one of your nuns. I cannot argue the morality of war with you. No, sir, you cannot. What's that? Oh. That's merely our truck returning from the village. Why was it out during curfew? The truck suffered a breakdown in the village and underwent repairs. To prevent another tragedy, madame, will you please see that none of the ladies of this convent go out after curfew? For any reason? Do you understand me? Oh, I understand you perfectly, Colonel. You're simply threatening us with murder. Oh, please yourself. To me, these are merely military necessities. Good morning. Uh, Colonel. Uh, Colonel Horston. Uh, would you like to see our chapel before you go? It's uh, very old and quite beautiful. No, thank you. Not this time. Please? Oh, this is a child's dress. How does it come to be here? We collect them, Colonel. Why? For whom? For children. What children? For children who need them. Madame, may I see this truck of yours that suffered the breakdown? It's merely an ancient truck, Colonel, which we use in our work. You're welcome to see it, Colonel. This way, please. Thank you. The soul is about to depart from the battery. There's very little life left in it. Perhaps it wants water. Oh, no, no, no. It had water to distraction. Here we have a problem of science. Get me a spanner, quickly. <gasps> Reverend Mother. You have brought us guests. Silence, you angels. Not a sound, you cherubim. Where are you taking the truck? Down the hill, Colonel. Our garage is down the hill. Perhaps it'll start now. What have you done to it? Nothing. But sometimes just looking at the engine and talking to it gives a new confidence. Excuse me. Bless you. 
your sister? Colonel, the Germans are noted for their mechanical skill. Perhaps you could restore our truck to life? I'm not an engineer. But if you want to start it, why don't you push it? There are enough of you here to move a tank. Push it, of course. My sisters, let us push! Hadn't you better steer at the wheel to steer? To steer? Yes. Oh, of course. How intelligent. Push, sisters, push! Harder, sisters. Push much harder. With more devotion. <laughs> what is in here? Melon. Not yet right, either. You will have to unload them anyway. You might as well do it here. We store them in the root cellar, which is down the hill between the garage and the barn. Very well. Excuse me. Have you released the handbrake? The handbrake? Yes. Oh, you Germans. You Germans. Once more, sisters, push! Thank you, Colonel. Without your help, we could never have finished our work. Not at all, madam. I enjoyed it. Major Spoletti. Would you please come and see me? Yes, Reverend Mother. <laughs> Reverend Mother, I have not wished some day to be canonized as the patrons of those that are bitten. Look. Let me have her, Sister Gertrude. Gladly. Take her to your cell, my dear. Perhaps you can help her. I must ask you to promise that you will not again involve us in these illegal acts. You must realize the whole order may be disgraced by our being arrested. You need not be involved again, Sister Goethe. But I shall make you no promise for myself or for those who feel as I do. As for disgrace, I cannot see any disgrace involved in saving children. Instead, we should think how to avoid being caught. This is vanity. Vanity and arrogance. We violate our vows by stealing out into the night and breaking the law. There are enough acts of Christian charity we can perform without this. But you want this sort of thing and you preen yourself that you've outwitted a German officer. If that is my reason, I am indeed wrong. If you persist in this course, I am bound by my conscience to report your actions to the Mother General. Conscience binds us all, sister. That you not violate yours. Reverend Mother... Our sister Consuela died last night on your order. Not on my order. On the order of her own heart's love for children. I ordered no one. Examine your soul, Sister Goethe, and see if the fear of punishment should keep us from an act of mercy. I have risked my life along with the others. Goethe. I'm not at all certain in my own heart if what I've done is right. It's not right. We're not warriors. Not warriors, no. But if we sit in the presence of evil and do nothing, what are we? Sister Mitya, a nun's vows are best kept 
not in suffering and silent longings, but in serenity. Ever, Mother, why do you speak to me like this? What have I done? I would like you to tell me what's troubling you. You may speak to me. I know, Ever, Mother. I love you very dearly, and I would never hide anything from you. Yes. Yes, Sister Mitya, you are full of love. Even perhaps for Major Scoletti. Oh, he is nothing to me, nothing. So loudly he is nothing? I wanted very much to be a bareback rider in a circus and wear a flashing, spangled pair of tights. Where did you first meet him? When he was wounded, I nursed him. Was it because of him that you came here? Oh, no, not because of him. And why? Ever, Mother, the world is so full of sorrow. And here you can escape it? Here I can learn not to contribute to it. Here I can learn to love all and to help all and... Mother, you're right. I was afraid. I was afraid I wasn't strong enough. I would have done anything he asked. Perhaps what you felt was love. Oh, no, I couldn't love him. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about anything. When I said I wanted to be a nun, he laughed at me. He said I wanted to grow wings. He was always pretending to polish my halo. Oh, he makes a mock of everything. He even makes a mock of God. Some men mock to keep from weeping. Yet it is only through Major Spoletti's carelessness that we can save the children. Has he not been blessedly careless, Sister Mitchell? You mean he helps us? He doesn't hinder. He could. He does not. Therefore, I believe he helps us. I didn't know. Sister Mitya, it is possible that with all the love that you contain, you should have a husband and children of your own. Think carefully. Do not bind yourself to this life if your heart is elsewhere. We need your whole heart Won't you try and talk to me, my dear? Don't you ever smile? I've no toys for you to play with. But I know lots of songs. I know one about a good shepherd who loves little children. I think you'd like that. Let me see. How does it begin? <laughs> I wouldn't let anyone else hurt you either. Don't you even tell me your name. No? Very well. There's no hurry. Some other time we can tell each other our names. But you will tell me? Jew Dog. What did you say? My name is Jew Dog. Any further slovenliness will be punished with solitary confinement. Clear? Yes, sir. Why do you not write legibly? What is this word? Garbage. What about garbage? A farmer named Petrelli is picking up the garbage from the kitchen, sir. For his pigs. There is no authorization from Colonel Horston. Major Spoletti's order, sir. 
But I'm sure if the colonel would rather have the garbage himself... Silence! All orders for entering and leaving this camp will henceforth be signed by Colonel Horton or myself. Clear? Yes, sir. Check. Correct. Pass. One moment. Hey, Mr. Field Marshal, find any fine stakes in that lot or a big sack of cabbages? Stick still there with the load. And what do I get out of it? A lot of sawdust and slops. Aren't even any bones in this batch. <laughs> what do you do with the bones? Send them to Berlin for the state banquets? We save them for the Italian army, especially the backbones. Drive on. I think you eat them yourself. That is account for the large deposits up here. Drive on. What kind of garbage does your fat girl eat? That's what I need for my pigs. <laughs> We shall see about this pig farmer and anyone else who insults the German Reich. Get a motorcycle and driver. Immediately! Did you sleep well, my little one? You remember when I told you my name yesterday? That's not your name. You mustn't think about that anymore. It isn't my real name. It's only what they call me. My name is Anna. Anna? Well, that's a beautiful name. My other name is Feltheim. Feltheim? That's lovely, too. My father and mother are called Jacob and Sarah. My aunt's name is Sarah, too. My cousin's name is Rebecca. And her sister's name is Sylvia. What a wonderful family. Do you know where any of them are? Where? God killed them. Oh, no, Anna. God loves us all. He doesn't kill. All you dogs have to die is God's will. He'll kill me, too. Oh, no, Anna, no. It's God's will that you live and you, you have a mother and father and you learn to love. Nothing is going to happen to you. Now you're safe. You promise? I promise. Sister Meteor, your help is needed. The garbage truck has arrived. I have to go now. You stay here and be a good girl. Are you her sister? I'm everybody's sister. Mine too. Yours too. Please. What's your name again? I forgot. Sister Meteor. Don't tell him I'm here. Who? God. I will tell no one. Sweet Jesus, help me to understand. like a fruitcake. It's full of surprises. All right. Come out. Surprises. Come. <laughs> Reverend Mother.
Very glad. Good morning, Lieutenant. Madam. Mother, you want me... You are under arrest. Arrest? It is not permitted to belittle the leaders of the Reich. You will come with me. Oh, that? Is that the... was a joke. Is it... A... I made a joke, that's all. Since you think it's so amusing to ridicule Field Marshal Goering, we shall see after we can excel how funny you feel. Get into your truck and follow me. Signor Petrelli, you were wrong to ridicule the field marshal. You must apologize. All right. Yes, I, I apologize. Field marshal, very fine fellow. No, it is not so simple as all that. Indeed it isn't. These are hard days for all of us. And the least we can give each other is courtesy. The lieutenant is right to ask it. Thank you, madame. Now. However, if you take Signor Petrelli away with you now, you will place a burden on us. May he not help us first? Very well. Unload your slops. We do not wish to inconvenience the nuns. Well, farmer. Unload. You go about it as if you were afraid of it. Unload. Unload properly. Uh, Lieutenant Schmidt. <laughs> Since this will take a little while, perhaps you'd like a cup of coffee? I'm sure it cannot be pleasant for you to stand so uh, close to this garbage. Thank you, madame. Maybe you'd like to see our convent. Our chapel, for instance, contains many things of antiquity. I am honored, madame. Stay here. See that it does not run away. Without fail. All right. Don't worry, Lieutenant. You can trust me. I won't run away. I'm at your service, madam. Emilio Casella, why? You know what's in that truck? Garbage. All right, Casella, you're going to see something. But you have to say nothing, nothing, you understand? Now, look, don't get me into trouble. If you start anything, I'll have to shoot you. I can't let you go. I don't want you to let me go. I want you to forget what you see. And if you don't, I'm going to cut your throat. And if I can't, there are a hundred others who will, Emilio Casella. What are you talking about? Just watch and say nothing. children, I should say. Mysteriously disappeared in broad daylight, while you were concerning yourself with the crude peasant raillery of a pig farmer. Colonel Horsten, sir, he insulted Reich's Marshal Goering. He called him fat. He is fat. He is fat, isn't he, Lieutenant? Isn't he fat? Colonel Horsten, sir, I cannot. Is he fat or not? Can't you answer a simple question? Sir? He's fat. Thank you, Lieutenant. Now then, Lieutenant, you say this pig farmer drove a truck of garbage out of the camp this morning. Yes, sir. And you rushed after him to defend the honor of Field Marshal Goering. Yes, sir. 
And you found him feeding the garbage to the pig at the convent? Yes, sir. Mr. Spoletti, is it strange how often this convent comes into our affairs? Lieutenant Schmidt, has it ever crossed your mind that this pig farmer might have wanted you to think of defending the honor of Field Marshal Goering rather than of the disappearance of nine children? But, sir, he couldn't. But, sir, he couldn't. It was a load of garbage. I left him under guard. The Italian guard. Lieutenant Schmidt, you are the overseer here. I hold you directly responsible. Get this business cleared up, and quickly, or you will be the sorriest ex-officer this army ever had. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. In the olden days, I had a staff, a real staff. It was a pleasure, I realize now. Sir, am I dismissed? In another five seconds, you brainless ramrod. I'll be so sick of the sight of you. I'll have you sent to the Russian front. Yes, sir. Your heart just to look into their eyes. No. They're so silent. They're all so silent. Let's not share them. What soup are we done? There now. I told you there would be plenty to eat. Special feast for our all guests. Eat, little hungry ones. Eat. Now come. Drink the soup while it's nice and hot. I don't know. I'll have to ask Joseph. He's our leader. You don't have to be afraid. This is a nice place. I know what you are. You're a camp informer. You work with them. I've seen girls like you before. I'm not. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of them either. This isn't a camp, Joseph. It's a convent. You've all been in camps for so long you don't remember anything else. Try and trust us, because we're going to help you. We're going to send you to new homes. Of course. Now, come and drink your soup. I'm not afraid. What's the matter? It's Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur? Well, what is Yom Kippur? It's a holy day for the Jews, I think. You must teach us, Joseph. Does Yom Kippur mean you cannot eat? Yes. On Yom Kippur we must fast. And we must walk, not ride. Already we've ridden in the trucks. Can't you be forgiven if by riding in a truck your lives are saved? I don't know. They tried to make my mother ride in the truck on the Sabbath. And that is forbidden. They have killed her when she refused. And now I have ridden on Yom Kippur. What will my mother say? What will my mother say? We'll pray for you to be forgiven. I'm sure God would forgive so little a sin. Because his heart is large and he loves you. We'll have the food taken away. We must tell the Reverend Mother at once. Yom Kippur is 
the culmination of the high holidays with a solemn day of atonement. Fasting is observed for 24 hours following Kol Nidri Eve, when the day of atonement ends and the faithful may break their fast. The children were right. But it's ridiculous. They've been starved for months. The observance of religious rules is never ridiculous, Sister Goethe. Um, the final service of Yom Kippur is the celebration of Yisko, the prayer for the dead. Before the service begins, all present write upon cards the names of relatives or dear ones who have recently died. And those names are included in the service by the rabbi. Children are blessed by their parents before they participate in the service. But they have no parents. And throughout the final services of Yisko, the shofar sounds periodically, and it is also blown at the conclusion. Blown? What is a shofar? Ah, a ram's horn. A horn at mass? Well, I mean, I suppose it passes for a mass, and that is with them. And it says one is supposed to walk on Yom Kippur and never to be carried by any conveyance, and that food is not to be eaten until sunset. We shall wait until after sunset, but we won't serve them supper. They shall have a feast. A pagan feast? when we've no butter and precious little of anything else. The children, as you say, Sister Goethe, have been starved for months. And for their love of God, as they view him, they have not eaten since the sunset yesterday. They deserve a feast. And the ceremony? The mass where they blow the horns? Shall they have that too? Wouldn't they feel lost and lonely and forsaken if it were denied them? Perhaps we can find a rabbi. A rabbi? Here, Reverend Mother, think of what you are saying. We save these children so that they may find new homes in Palestine, so that they may be Jews. Now, can we, in all grace and justice, deny them the right to be Jews while they're here with us? But is there a rabbi left in Europe? The Germans have been so thorough. I'll ask Father de Mem. Perhaps he'll know. Yes, Mother Catherine, I'm here. What? Well, it's possible he is still here. I will try to find him. Yes, very well, Mother Catherine, I'll try. I wish the cookery didn't have so many spices. Spices are so inflammatory to the nerves. Why we sit and require so much pastry. The information in my case goes straight to the back. How very odd of them that the men should cover their heads in church and the women not. It should be just the reverse to be proper. They do it to be contrary. Hmm? They're a very contrary sect. A Jewish altar. Yes, Sister Constance. I really can't believe it. I do hope we're not in sin. Oh, so do I. Oh, the times are so unusual. All right, Lieutenant, we have this one, but it's not enough. I want everyone involved in this underground business. Yes, sir. Round up every person in the camp who aided the pig farmer, whoever helped him to load his truck. Call a general assembly of all personnel and arrange for a firing squad. No. no. I was promised to, if I gave the information, I'd be left alone. Look, I have a wife, I have children. I wasn't part of all this. It was your duty to have given us the information immediately. The farmer told me the partisans would kill me. That's what happens to those who try to stay in the middle. At war, it is better to be definitely on one side or the other, rather than be fired upon by both. Mrs. Poletti, help me. I, I'm not in that rotten German army. Why did you let them do this? Silence! Hands off my men! The death of a coward is like a soldier who can't fight back. I require a reply, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Colonel Horst, I strongly advise against these drastic measures you suggested to arouse hostility among my men against the Germans. Hostility? Yes, sir. Punishment by all means, but, but don't shoot him. 
measure your advice is probably very sound. But notices have been posted that anyone aiding the escape of camp prisoners will be shot. Colonel Horstow, I find it difficult to believe that a man of your education and ability should be so... so dedicated to the imprisonment of children. My dear Major, you're perfectly right. I detest this nonsense. But now we see that the nuns are involved. They can't be alone in this business. So they're very likely to have partisan help. And it's the partisans I'm after. At the expense of nuns and children. Major, every breakdown in military authority is a battle lost. Schmidt, we shall proceed as planned. Colonel Horstmann. Further, Major Spoletti. Since you feel that German regulations may bring hostility, I shall require that you yourself take the pig farmer amongst his own people and publicly execute him as an object lesson to the local population. Colonel Horstmann. This will rouse the partisans and the whole village. That is an order, Major. In the German army, all military regulations are carried out to the letter. Every order is obeyed absolutely. I require a reply. Yes, sir. Go in peace, sister. I am the rabbi you sent for. I am sorry to startle you, but since being a partisan, I have found it safer not to use the ordinary entrances and exits. And now, if you will take me to the children. children. The rabbi is getting ready to hold a service for you. And we must write on the cards the names of your mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, and any member of your family that may have died, so that he may say prayers for their peace in heaven. We'll start. Rachel? Now, Joseph, would you like to come and give me the names of your relatives that have recently died? Mona Cohen, my sister. Bada Cohen, my sister. Anna Cohen, my grandmother. Abraham Cohen. Please, write for me. Maria Bernard, my aunt. Abraham Kilinski, my uncle. Chaim Rosenwald. Not so quickly, please. Now. Chaim Rosenwald, my cousin. Clara Rosenwald, my cousin. Lea Rosenwald, my cousin. Arthur. <laughs> you go next, Rebecca.
Lieutenant, you follow us on the lorry with the men. Get in, Major. Very good, Major. You showed you had iron in your blood, after all. I'll tell you something, Major Spalletti. I would have been sorry to lose you. If you had raised any difficulties, I would have been forced to execute you too. And now we'll go to the convent and bring back those prisoners your countrymen turned over to the nuns. And we'll find out the names of partisans. The pig farmer wouldn't tell us. They won't tell you, Colonel. They will do exactly as they are told. As you have done. Tribes of Israel. I think the rabbi's ready now, Mother Catherine. Very well then, children. You may go down now. But go very carefully and very quietly. In the name of your father and mother, I give you my blessing. In the name of your father and mother, I give you my blessing. give you my blessing. In the name of your father and mother, I give you my blessing. Shalom, Mark. Yeah, you'll see an agitorium male. Don't 
fathers and your mothers and your sisters and your brothers and Hayis kadao vis kadash me rabo Amen Vi olmo divoro hirosei vi yamlech malchusei va chayi chaunu vi machaun di kol beis Yisrael vi agolo vis man kori vimru Amen I'm afraid there's to be trouble. I heard that Colonel Horston has had Petrelli executed. The Colonel will be coming here. Do you disturb our devotion? We'll dispense with all nonsense this time, madame. You are under arrest, together with all other ladies of this peculiar establishment. I am surprised that you concern yourself with the arrest of nuns. Are we the enemy now? You know why we are here. Where are the prisoners? We have no prisoners. me, young man. I'm sorry. You must move. I like it here, and here I'll stay. My person is inviolate. So. Come out, Anna, my child.
The same God that loves children punishes with all the torments of hell the killers of children. Did you do this? Lieutenant Schmidt. Requiem eternum dona eis domine. Et lux perpetua lux verde. Now listen, all of you. As you are the person in authority here, I hold you responsible for what has happened. That is right, Colonel. I alone am responsible. That is right. You were carefully warned. I made a special effort to warn you that aiding the escape of camp prisoners was illegal. Are you afraid to call them children, Colonel? For they are children, you know. Children are prisoners like any other. And you are none. And now you are prisoners. Yes, Colonel. You bravely trapped a handful of nuns going about God's business. You give me no alternative. You shall have time for prayers into whatever religious requirements they are. And as you are responsible, you will then be taken to the courtyard and shot. Oh, no, no! Holy Mother of God! Jesus, mercy. Yes. All right. The other nuns are equally guilty. And as such, liable to execution. How many are you, please? Twenty-eight. We shall sir. count you at thirty. We shall shoot every tenth person guilty of breaking the law. But I've told you already. I'm the one responsible. No one else. Since you have been sentenced already, two more penalties are required. They may be volunteers, or I'll choose them myself. No, Colonel. Please, I beg you. Not the others. Not the others. I am the one responsible. Please, please, you must not do this. I'm sorry, madam. <laughs> well, are they volunteers? All right. I'll make the selection myself. A novice. It would be wrong for her to represent us. As you wish. Someone else? Let me, Reverend Mother. My heart was full of bitterness and hatred. Now I understand. Please, allow me to stand beside you. Thank you, Reverend Mother. Very well. One more, please. Mother Catherine. I am old. Have not my years earned for me the privilege of standing beside you? These sentences are a direct result of your own actions. If the Mother Superior or any one of you wishes to lighten these sentences, let her answer my questions. What questions? I want to know the route used to get the children out of Italy. 
I want the names of those who helped you. I want particularly the names of partisans. So you can shoot them too? No, Colonel. If you want to live, you must answer. Good father spends much of his time here, it seems. Perhaps he could give us the names of those who help and the route the children take. No, Colonel Horston, I cannot help you. So you don't care about life either, do you? Father de Man is only incidentally involved with us as friend and confessor. He's not to blame for what we have done. I'm getting tired of this. Lieutenant Schmidt, question the good father. Answer! Who are the partisans who help you? No, Lieutenant. Your way. Answer! Answer! Colonel Horsten! Answer! Answer! All right, Lieutenant. Father, Father to me. If Marta has only understood what bores they are. But perhaps I concentrate too much on the seasoned soldiers. Perhaps one of those could tell us what we want to know. This one. This one may be made of tender stuff. Hey, you. Get up. Perhaps you could tell us the names of the partisans. Lieutenant Schmidt, questioner. No, I can't permit it. Then give the information. Believe me, I take no pleasure in this. I've told you already. This child is a novice. She can't answer your questions. She doesn't know. This is sheer, senseless brutality. Remove the mother's superior, please. She may not know, but you do. The brutality, then, will be on your head. Will you answer? No, Reverend Mother. Don't speak. Martyrs, all of you. Lieutenant, go ahead. You're against this kind of thing, but it's you, you doing this, not Schmidt. Control yourself, Major Spoletti, or I'll be forced to place you under arrest. Colonel Austin, I wish to talk to the Mother Superior, alone. Why? Perhaps, perhaps I can get this information. A few minutes, Colonel. Perhaps we can avoid this execution. All right. Reverend Mother. Schmidt, take them all into the main courtyard. Order! To the main courtyard! Quickly! Move along there! Move! Quick! Move! 
I owe you thanks for your help in the past. At least, I believe you've helped, Major. Reverend Mother, you've got to tell him the names. You ask me to sign death warrants for all those wonderful people who helped. You ask me seriously? Tell him, tell him anything, it doesn't matter, but hold up the execution. That's the important thing. Why? What are you going to do? It will give me time to talk to my men. This execution is not going to take place. I'm going to kill him. No. I forbid it, Major. To save your life and the other sisters and the children. If need be, God will find room in his heart for the children and for us. Our lives cannot be saved by murder with my consent and help. If God had any special regard for you and your convent, you wouldn't be in the situation. You must do as I tell you. No, Major. Is it so hard to understand? I am sworn to a way of life. I will be what I say I am. There cannot be any compromise with thou shalt not kill. Look, I have a soldier already compromised a hundred times. One more killing will make no difference in my hereafter. So the world has always said. One more killing does not matter. So Pontius Pilate said. We cannot be saved by murder. I'm sure of that. Even now, the Allies are on their way to saving you by killing Germans. I have no control over that. Only over this convent. Here we live by the law of God because we said we would. Then pray for me. I'm going to kill him. Major Spillett. I have been afraid all the time that you would end our association, Major. May I have your gun, please? Thank you. Consider yourself under arrest. Pass. Shall waste no more time. Lieutenant Schmidt, you shall finish here quickly. Escort the mother superior to her position. Dear Father de Men. Major Spoletti is under arrest. He will be court-martialed by due military process. As will any of you. You forget that you are soldiers. Lieutenant Schmidt, take over. Major. Ego vos absolvo. Have omnibus censurius at his life. In non departures of the field of the Spirit of Thank you, Father. Madame, Madame, I offer you your last opportunity to speak. Please. Dearest sisters, we have been brought to this by serving God as we were sworn to do. By trying to make a world 
that would be fit for children. God be with you. Very well. Proceed. Major. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation and deliver us from evil. What will you do? Join the partisans, if they'll have us. Us? We are all going. There'll be nobody left here to say what has happened. You'll all be safe. Goodbye, Mitya. Goodbye. 